I want to get in a beef with her. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but here's the thing about the call her daddy thing. And sure. God bless her. Right. I would say that. I don't know her. Mm -hmm. God bless her. Yeah. Six, $60 million. They're not going to make that money back. Absolutely not. No way. They won't make $6 million. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's the just merch... Get which Barstool still owns, yes. is what drives the whole thing, I think. Right. People buy the merch. Mm -hmm. That's the most profitable thing. I, would w I think the closest I would get to the Call Her Daddy podcast would be a hat <laughs> that says Call Her Daddy. <laughs> I'd wear that. You'd do that. Yeah, but I'm not going to... I tried to listen to an episode. What is it? Because I've never listened. But she's getting 60 million. I made four seconds in. Really? <laughs> And I turned it on. I said, no. Was, was it that bad? Yeah, it's just, it's not, but it's not for me though. Right. You know what I mean? You got to know what's but is for it you. But it interesting? Like to me, it's like, if it was just like, is it an exploration of like anal? I, where you listen to it and you go, how do you take a big one without getting an anal fissure? <laughs> like, is it because well, I They better fix a, those titles, man. Right. Because I'm right. not having it. All right. Yeah. I didn't, I, I, I'm. I think the podcast money now is getting silly. Yeah, and this I, is uh, yeah, this is silly. This is Bitcoin. That's right. From like uh, five, six years ago, it's getting silly. Yeah, and I think people are. I think these companies are going to just eventually go. Oh, we learned our lesson. Oh, they're going to pull back yeah. hard. They're pulling back. Spotify yeah. likes Rogan. Right. Um, I don't know if they're in love with it. They, yeah. they like it's a solid. Like it's good. Mm. People are coming to the platform. I've heard they don't like the Ringer. The Bill Simmons thing. They're not thrilled Is with that. Is that like a sports thing? Yeah, it's a sports thing, and they right. gave him $100 million. Yeah. They're just they're just, <laughs> they're just They're just giving people pretend are money. They, they're just, are they, is the money even real, or is they spotifying the money? Is it spotting know. the money? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's on loan. Yeah, because I feel like I'm going to start a podcast, and I'm going to come in way too late. Yeah. I'm going to get a book of coupons. Yeah. You're That's gonna all get, I'm going to get from. You're going to get an IOU <laughs> from Spotify. <laughs> I don't, it's it's yeah. weird. It's too much money. Yeah. People are getting it. I don't know. Yours is already on there. So what is the thing? Is yeah. It, do you just be like, do you walk in there with like a black trench coat and a suitcase and you're yeah. like, fill it with money or I take it off Spotify? No, they're not going to give us anything. What if, what if, what if Spotify is, if, what is their communication with us? Been like, uh, you can be honest. We're not getting any money. Th there's been no offer. <laughs> <laughs> but our agent lied. Like he lies and says he's getting us money. Yeah, he says a, a deal might come through. Our agent, they're working make, on they a make deal. stuff up. Yeah, of course. And they tell you that there's a big deal coming <laughs> and they're, it's just not true. Yeah, Sirius yeah. XM. Yeah, you Sirius know. and all the, we're getting sure. a deal, yeah. yeah, and they'll call you up. They're like, There's a company called Clincher, like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. all a fake, yeah. like, thing. They're like, it's a digital media content creator, and they're really interested. It's just I, a general name with the company, yeah. It's, Bill Sirius called, <laughs> <laughs> he wants to give you 250 million dollars. Yeah. It's like, How no. do you feel about 300 million dollars? Yeah. <laughs> now, you'll never see it because it's not real, but just right. tell me how you feel. Did about you like it. the number? Yeah, yeah. Was, I think they offered Rogan money, and he said no, and then like. When the pandemic hit, they're like, how about this? And he's like, okay, let's do it. Do, but does that mean you take your podcast off other p platforms? I don't know. What does know. that mean? It did for him, right? Joe, you can't get anywhere mm. but Spotify. Oh. Spotify exclusive. Right. Call your daddy, I also believe. <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> call your daddy. Call her daddy. Wait, what is it? It's call her daddy. <laughs> but call your daddy is so much funnier. Call your daddy is better. <laughs> if it was a show where she had to call her father yeah. and tell him all the things she did sexually, <laughs> I would really prefer that show. I, I'm going to tell you, now I'm listening. <laughs> now I'm in. Like, she yeah. calls him up and she's like, dad. And he goes, he's like, that's the fourth episode. He's like, oh my God. He's like, like he knows she's every, calling. Every art, uh, it starts with the ringing. Yeah. And then it's just him picking up yeah. that click in and it goes, <sighs> now what? Yeah. He's so dejected. Yeah. And she's just like, well, you know, it's another episode of Call Your Daddy. Yeah. Hi, Daddy. And he's like, hey. Yeah. And she goes, all right. So I want to tell you this story when I was in Cancun. And he's like, you just hear him like, you just hear eyes clinking in his glass. He's like, Jesus fucking Christ. He's <laughs> episode like, eight, yeah. you just, you hear the phone go down <laughs> and then a gunshot. <laughs> he just blows his brains out. <laughs> Call your daddy. But that, that uh, that one's exclusive too. I think when they give right. you the big money, yes, when they roll out the biggins, mm -hmm. you can't 
you they Spotify's like they can't find this show. Right. Yes. Other than <laughs> if they find this podcast mm-hmm. anywhere but Spotify, yeah. we'll kill them. Like that's <laughs> the level We'll of kill your they, daddy. Yeah, we'll kill your daddy. <laughs> so those are the big deals they made. They made the ringer, they made Rogan, they made Call Her Daddy. Mm-hmm. Uh Dak Shepard's podcast. Dak Shep- what did Dak Shepard get? I, I read sixty, but you What's never really know. What's his whole thing? Positivity. Isn't he just isn't his biggest claim to fame being married to Kristen Bell? I kind of believe it probably yes. was, but yeah. now he's got this massive show and I don't what is it? It's armchair expert. What, but what so, is it? So he's like a ther- he's like a therapist to, to like Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen and all these people. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like curious. Yeah. Aren't they're really rich and famous? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's the problem? <laughs> yeah, you don't need you don't someone know. rich to tell you that you're rich. Still, <laughs> I'm aware of it. Right. The armchair is nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Like I can tell yeah. this is a good armchair. Thank you. What? I don't know anything about. His podcast. I'm sure he's a good guy. I don't want to find out a guy is pretending to be an expert and getting paid sixty million dollars. Yeah, because there's a there's an actual expert very (laughs) upset. Yeah, how how many experts that are actual experts have zero (laughs) dollars? Maybe Spotify could get some of them. So the the website says the Armchair Expert podcast celebrates the messiness of being human. I mean, I can't. Do these windows open? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just jump out from here. Canal Aurora is with us, by the way. Follow Canal Aurora. Give, yeah. give people your social it's media. It's uh, all day KCA. All day KCA. Is that everywhere? Is that on everything? T- it's on. It's on, on uh, Twitter. Twitter. It's on QAnon. It's on <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. It's, on it's, it's the website. It's everything. 4chan. Yeah. Kuhn. <laughs> Fundamentalist.com. <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Hilarious comedian started. Started with me, um, you know, we were like, like I was going to say thugging it out. I don't know why. We were not thugging it out. I was going to say we were thugging it out at open mics. I'm thugging it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what thugging it out means, but we were at open mics mm-hmm. in 2010. Yes. Late 2010. Yes. I met you. I was doing my first set mm. ever. At, uh, which I, don't, I might have done better than tonight. I'm kidding. <laughs> I love New York. Uh, uh, it was I was at a coffee shop in Long Island called Wild Child slash tattoo parlor. Tattoo parlor. <laughs> yes, right. And you'd bomb, and you'd hear the needle buzz. <laughs> yeah. You you hear whenever you bomb, it's just a guy going, "Ugh." Yeah, this guy. And they were all going to like get their like they'd get like some chick's name tattooed on them. Right. It, that tattoo shop did a lot of like like. Uh, like whatever what is the term when you like turn one tattoo into another one a transformation maybe i don't know it was a lot of names being changed yes and dogs faces because i it was a lot of dogs but i remember there was always like a consultation yeah like we'd we'd be like we'd walk in and we'd see somebody and they'd be like okay so here's what we could do it's like you made a mistake here's what we could do we could turn your ex-girlfriend's name into r.i.p and a nice 9-11 we could do like an (laughs) r.i.p right the heroes with the towers and they're like okay i constantly heard from those uh, tattoo chairs you know this is permanent (laughs) (laughs) now you know this is permanent right you know you can't walk in here tomorrow (laughs) and get rid of this and by the way they should like that was such a weird eerie thing for us to hear Doing stand-up comedy because it's like, oh fuck, this is permanent. Yeah, for a lot of us, it was permanent. And um, I was doing my set, and it was like whatever, dumb. Mm-hmm. And Canal had like a little net book. Yes, I remember this. Yeah, it yeah. Was yeah. A little like a net book. Right. And you were like typing on it, and every now and then I would say something funny, and he'd go, huh. <laughs> he'd have like a little, he'd have like a little like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and then and then I was because Canal was a guy. I was like, wanted to like re- like impress. And then there was another guy with a Scott, right? Who I did, like didn't want to impress. Who, who <laughs> he gave I me love, a he gave I me love. a fake name. Yeah. the first time I met him, what what did he? He's call? like, my name is Michael, and I was like, this is I'm gonna know this man for the rest of my life. Yeah, and I'm livid. Why why did he do that? I don't know. He's just a weird. You know, Scott's a weird guy. He's, he's an odd. He's dog. a great guy. A weird. Dude. I love him, but he's yeah. nuts. But I remember that that was the beginning of, and then the canal like we would go into the city and like do. Stand-up comedy at yes. these crazy places. Yeah, I started doing this thing called Trip Sunday. Yes. And you would take two comics. I would take two comics with me. Yes. So it would be three comics, three mics, uh, one day. Basically right. 100 miles of driving. And it was usually me, you, 
Dennis, yeah. Scott. Yeah. yeah, it would be. Oh, it would alter. It always switch around. It switch. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes you might be booked. Sometimes right. you just. Sometimes you're like, you know what, man? I don't want to eat my fucking ass three days, three yeah. three mics in a row. That so. was a great day of comedy. Yes, because yes. it was. We did a a hipster mic. Yeah. A black mic. Yeah. And then a Long Island a club mic. mic. Sad mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would it would always end good or bad at a pizza shop across the street yes. eating yes. eating a couple slices. And one of the saddest moments and I, I want to let you tell the story cuz you mm-hmm. remember it exactly how it happened. Right. Was the the night you decided you had to move into New York City. So we're doing it's like another trip Sunday. I mean there's 100 miles of driving it's for one day. It's a lot. Yeah. Because we would start in Long Island, or I'd pick you up. Yes. Or you'd come to my mom's place. Yes. And then we shoot into the city. Yes. We do these mics. We're trying to trying to figure out parking, trying to get to these things, and then uh, then shoot out to Long Island. And not like regular, not like you know, a simple like New Hyde Park. Nothing right. like that. We're talking in there, deep, deep Huntington. Deep. Yes. Yeah. So, and it's not every day would everything work. In fact, most of the times it wouldn't. Right. You're just eating it all day long. So this day, nobody's happy. Yeah. We're all we're in the car. We're now in Deep Long Island, Huntington. We had bombed at the hipster mic. Yes, bombed in the black room. Yes, yes. And now we're heading back home. Right, <laughs> and we're now at this mic in in Huntington. It's a second floor. It's this place. I think it was called Chesterfields. Yes. Yeah. And it was like it had some history to it, but nobody yeah. knows what. N- n- nobody knows the history, but yeah. everyone always said, you know, this place is known. Yeah. I think they used to say Eddie Murphy yes, started here. Eddie Murphy started. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, which yeah. no one knew what that meant. <laughs> I, I think Eddie Murphy took what... the bus that passed yeah. by there. I still have no idea what that meant. <laughs> no clue. But people would be like, have some respect. <laughs> Eddie Murphy started here. Yeah, but like you, sh- they have a picture and it's a white guy named Eddie Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, it's also these are the most racist people in the yeah. America telling you that Eddie Murphy started there. Right. I'm like, you're an insanely racist person. Like, you know, they're just taking pride in the accomplishments of like a, there's a picture of Eddie Murphy with his racial epithets yeah. scrawled yeah. on the glass. Eddie Murphy started here. He should have stayed here. Yeah. It's like, okay. So we're we're sitting there and uh I'm sitting next to you and we're just watching people go up. Yeah. And then a guy gets up, and he is a Rodney Dangerfield impersonator. Yes. As to why you need to do Rodney's material at an open mic, <laughs> right? Beyond me. Yeah. It's yeah. already tried. Yes. Yeah. He, he did it on Letterman. <laughs> right. I mean, you know what I mean. He did yeah, it you're not on working, Carson. You're not yeah. working anything out. <laughs> yeah. You're not, right. Yeah. It's like, why do you need to retry material on yeah. Carson? Does I get no respect work? Yes. Yeah, this For your audience, it does. <laughs> For whatever birthday party has hired you, yeah, yeah this is going to be fine. <laughs> Who quality controls Rodney Dangerfield's material? <laughs> but the guy's up there. He's got the suit. He's got the tie. Yeah. He's shaking the tie. Yeah. I got no respect. Yeah. And then you hear somebody yell from off stage, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> And we <laughs> look over because we're like, this is an open mic. Nobody should be heckling. Right. It's already it's mostly comics anyway. Yeah. And we look over and by the door is another Rodney Dangerfield <laughs> impersonator dressed in a suit and red tie yeah. going, you stole my act. Yeah. <laughs> In complete earnestness. Yes. No, the, to, to, to the extent to which this is not a joke. Yeah. That it was not, that no one appreciated this in any in a comedic way at all. No. The, the what the fuck was genuine. Yeah. He was shaken to his core. <laughs> he walked into a Rodney Dave. He saw the other one and was yeah. like, what the fuck? And he goes, he yells from offstage, just because I had a heart attack, you think you can do my act? Yes. <laughs> Which is Rodney's act, <laughs> yeah. but whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I lean over to you and I just whisper, I'm moving next <laughs> yeah. week. I'm moving to the city. So first of all, the Rodney, one Rodney gets off. The next Rodney, yeah. then like they let him go up like right after. <laughs> right, right, right. Because he's like upset. Yeah. And he does look sick. <laughs> like he's yeah. not done. He's older. He's pale. <laughs> he's he had legitimately suffered a heart attack. No, he was like in recovery <laughs> yeah, right. for a cardiac incident. It was not good. <laughs> so and he, yeah. he cuts the line and he goes, This is how you do it. Right. And does more Rodney material, and then he goes like this. He goes, he goes, I'm I'm here, and he goes, 
I just, I'm recovering from a heart attack. He goes, <laughs> I don't know if I can still do this. <laughs> and I just want to try this out because right. it's the way I make money. Yes. And I want to know if I can still do it. So now it's like the added pressure of like, not only Jay, and he wasn't that good. No, like no. He was, I, I could barely tell it was Rodney. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, doing a Rodney Dangerfield impersonation, yeah. it's a young man's game. It's not a, it's, yeah, it's a young man's yeah. game. And by young man, I mean 40s. Yeah, 45, Early 40s, Long yeah. Island. You yes, know. yeah. Um, and uh, and the kid, I was like, I got to go. And you were yeah. the first um, t- amongst us yes. to have to leave. Yeah, I, I lived in an apartment in the East Village. Yes. In Alphabet City. Alphabet City. Yeah, C and Ninth. And, and you were the first one. And I was so impressed. And everybody was like, fuck, he's doing it. Yeah. He's actually doing it. Right. He's actually leaving. He's not going to have pizza with us anymore. No. He's no. leaving. And then, uh, and then you moved right after. I moved pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I moved pretty soon. Because I used to hang out with you. Yes. And I used to, and I'm like, man, come on, this is better. Right. I just realized it was better. I'm like, yeah. this works. Yeah, this is what you we should have been doing. We were because yeah. it was easy. This is the thing. This is yeah. the trap. It's easy to do open mics in Long Island because you drive to the thing. Yes. You drive, you park your car. Yes. There's a parking lot. Yes. And you walk right in, right. you do your set, and then you leave. Right. It's not like the city where you're on the subway. Yes. You're someone is dancing in front of you. Yes. And you're like, I gotta make these jokes work. Right. And then you go mic to mic to mic. It's it, not like that. In so, Long Island, you're still the same person. Yeah. But you're just doing comedy. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's the problem. Not that you could still work at Verizon. <laughs> right. And do right. your bullshit. Yes. So it's when fine. you make that sacrifice to move into New York City. You're taking on a different identity. So I had a conversation with some comics, and they were like, well, what makes you a comic, a comedian, right? And they right. were like, well, is it money? And I'm like, well, I think that you got to give up a certain amount. Yes. And that's what it You're is. You're right. Yeah. And a, yes. a lot of these guys moved from other places yeah. here to do comedy. It, it, it has to be, to me, when I look at it, I don't think it's money. Yeah. It, to me, it has to be the organizing principle of your life. Yes. That's what I view it as right to be a real comedian yeah to be somebody who does comedy whatever Mm -hmm. but if you're a comedian to do it it's got to be the organizing principle of your life meaning i'm a comedian and these are the choices i made in pursuit of that you could make money and it can still not be the organizing principle of your life absolutely there are people that we met in long island who were just like yeah this is what i get paid to do this and you're like people pay for this we always knew what we didn't want to be yeah. I think that's a great thing about starting in Long Island. Right. I, I, listen, I went back to Long Island and I was at the diners there and I was, you know, showing my friends there. And I'm like, mm. I'm really happy. And listen, I, I love Long Island. Yeah. I grew up there. But I'm really happy I I got out of there. Yeah, man. I'm really and happy. when you go back to those diners, yeah. they stink. They're horrible. <laughs> yeah, they're terrible. And you know what it There's is? There's like four good diners in the entire Long Island. I mean, I think they all used to be better, but yeah. now it's just... But you also look at the people, right? and you look at everything, and you go, you know what? I'm glad my journey was out. Right. I'm glad yeah. my journey was out of here. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And, and it doesn't mean that like... I won't eventually move back there and get addicted to pills. <laughs> and, you know. I thought we went to a uh, a Dar Williams concert yes. together. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Dar we- Williams is a folk singer. Yeah, and you put me on to Dar Williams, and she's not bad. She, I I saw her YouTube live. Yes, they're during so, the pandemic. So many people right now are like they hate when they. When there's actually incontrovertible proof that I suck dick. Yeah. And this is, they hate it. They're like, because they can ignore it for so much of right. the content. And then every now and then they're like, fuck. But they, not here. Not, not here. here. Not when Dar is yeah. mentioned. Yeah, Dar Williams, who's like a folk singer who like, is like, she's um, Northeastern. Yeah. Like, uh, lives in like, you know, the Hudson River Valley. Yes, that's where we saw her. Yeah, we saw her. Purple Crayon was Purple the venue. Purple Crayon. Yeah. She's, uh, you know, she's always trying to like spring terrorists from jail. I respect yeah. <laughs> She's always, she was like banging a tambourine outside right. like, you know, some terrorist fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how was the YouTube? It was good. It was great. Yeah. It was fun. It was like, you know, we're in the pandemic. We were during right. the pandemic. It was like, yeah. what else am I going to do? I got a little upset with her because the last time I saw her in Brooklyn, she started bringing out like a bunch of other people, like, she brought out a poet. No, I don't want that either. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, no. She started bringing out people, and I started going, hey, man, do yeah. the hour. Right. 
Do right. the hour. She did. Just, this is know, the pandemic, like, so nobody's visiting. Good. And I was like, this is perfect. You got to do the work. It, yeah. Like she'd bring out a, a poet mm -hmm. and then somebody did a poem and then she like brought like someone from the neighborhood up yeah. in Brooklyn to do I don't, something. I don't I'm care like, about your gardening issues. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was kind of like that. Right. It was kind of like, and I, somebody's talking about like voting for like, voting for like a councilwoman. I'm like, <laughs> hey, and everything was like, I'm just like, at least play guitar in the background. Something. <laughs> when Something. fucking yeah. doing that. Like, it's like if on. I came on this podcast and talked about a leaky fire hydrant. <laughs> right. Like, I got to tell you guys what really matters here. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll do it on my personal time. Right. Don't make it the show. Yeah. Don't yeah. make it the fucking show. Right. Sheathunderwear.com. It's the best underwear, and we support them. The owner of Sheath Underwear, Robert, what's his name? Patron. He's being charged right now for war crimes at The Hague. And we still support him. And we think that that woman, that pregnant woman, did have a bomb. And I think that the evidence will show that. And I think Robert acted um, appropriately. Sheath underwear is great. It's got a pouch for your junk so you don't chafe. Very important in the summer. Great underwear. can be used as a bathing suit. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Promo code TIM. You save 20%. Do you know how important it is? Uh, not only right now because it's the summer and sheath underwear is great underwear, but to support Robert, who is in the fight of his life right now, being charged uh, with a war crime for an act in Iraq, okay, where he shot a pregnant woman in her stomach. <laughs> I know for a fact that he did that as a last resort, <laughs> and I support Sheath Underwear because I support Robert. And he didn't even; she didn't even die. Yeah, from the shot in the stomach. This is what people don't realize: she lost the baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. They're accusing him. They're saying that after he shot her, a man matching his description doused her with kerosene and lit her on fire. I don't believe that. That hasn't been proven. If it was proven that he did it, I'm sure there's a really damn good reason that he lit that woman on fire after shooting her baby. Mm -hmm. Sheathunderwear.com. Promo code Tim to save 20%. You know, he was dishonorably discharged from the military, and they're kind of turning their back on him mm. because they're saying he kind of went AWOL, and uh, it was like an Apocalypse Now situation where he's basically running his own thing, and they said he was not taking orders, and he didn't respect the chain of command. He was just kind of going out and butchering women and children. Mm. What I think he was doing is what needed to be done to... Uh, secure uh, his brothers and fight for our nation's interests. Support him and not that lying bitch that he lit on fire. <laughs> Sheathunderwear.com, promo code Tim. Folks, so many people right now are struggling with mental illness. As the quarantine is ending, people are full of all kinds of anxieties and they need to go back out into the world. They need to have the confidence and the mental stability to go out there and take advantage of all the great opportunities coming in the, in the current uh, gig economy. Well, we think better help is the way to do it. It's an online counselor service. They provide many types of help that may not be available in physical locations depending on where you live. Log on right now and start speaking to a counselor in under 48 hours. They have licensed professionals. You can change one at any time if you don't vibe with them. Better help is better. Better help is better. It's better. I love help. Do you like help? I like getting helped. But what about if it's the help is better? That sounds nice. And that's my favorite thing about it. Log on, log in, check in, and then you're fine. You'll feel good and happy and warm and friendly and free. 
You'll be able to dance under the stars. The children will look to you for wisdom. You'll become an elder in the community with respect. You'll get the new big job in the corner office, and you'll have a sailboat if you go on better help. The girls and the guys will be happy when you come into the local tavern grinning ear to ear because you've unloaded all the stuff you had to say to the person at BetterHelp. You'll walk into the luncheonette and they'll say, oh, Biff is here. They'll make you a loose meat sandwich. You'll sit you down and pour you a cold one. And all will be right with the world because you went to BetterHelp. You'll walk into the car dealership and instead of seeing you as a mark who they just want to railroad and steal from, they'll see you as a person that they want to help put you into a good car, drive you around something nice and shiny. They'll buy you a soda pop and tell you all the secrets and they'll take care of you, good care of you because you're a different man because of better help. At the beach club, they'll give you the, the good towels, the ones that are hot that just came out of the dryer because of better help. The ice cream truck will no longer be out of the thing you, don't, you want. They'll give it right to you. Mm -hmm. And when you try to pay, they'll say, your money is no good here. And you'll fight with them a little bit. They'll say, you need the money. And they'll go, you need the money. And you'll go, does it look like I need the money? I have a fucking Lexus. And they'll laugh and they'll take the money from you and say, you're right. You're a successful man. You know why? Because of better help. Mm -hmm. It's sponsored. They're sponsoring our podcast. 10% off your first month of better help. Go to betterhelp.com, betterhelp.com slash Tim D. Betterhelp.com slash Tim D. In all seriousness, it's a great way. It's a truly great way to talk to people, to connect, to love, to laugh, to live. Sometimes you got to lose until you win. Do you understand? Mm. Yeah, I think I understand. Yeah. I had <laughs> to I had to lose you to love me. Oh, that's that song you always listen to. I don't think it's a song. I think it's a way of life. <laughs> it's Selena Gomez. That's right. That's who it is. I don't yeah. always listen to it, but I listen to it occasionally. You listen to that and then the Taylor Swift uh, summer one. What is it? Uh, it's called Cruel Summer. Cruel Summer, yeah. Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And Tim Dillon Show listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tim D. What have you liked? You were in New York for the entire pandemic. Yes. And that and that's a lot of people left. Yes. A lot of people left. People went home. They went back to their to their you know the cities that they came from, comics. Yeah. And Do you judge that? No. Okay. No. Why am I it's like good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Go right. home. Right. You need this. <laughs> yeah. Mentally, you need this. Yes. yes. They're unwell. <laughs> yeah. They've been here too long. Yes. It's this is the same thing I'll get art like, you know, this is what I said about when you start here, right? When you start here, what really sucks is that when you start in, I don't know, Chicago and you come to New York, you come to New York and then you get you, you sharpen your teeth. You go back to Chicago, you murder. Right. Your self-esteem chips are filled. Right. And now it's like, oh, I feel ready to go back into that muck that's the city. Yes. When you start in New York City, there's no place to collect self-esteem. No. So a lot of these people are long overdue. For, for a little hit. For a little hit. The little hit of self-esteem. Yeah. They need it back. A, a home-cooked meal. Yes. Something. Someone to hug them. I think it was good for a lot of people to go and reconnect yes. with family. Right. And maybe... They needed to reconnect with um, who who they were before they moved to places like New York or their original LA. psychiatrist. Yes, yeah, or yeah, the yeah. original <laughs> yeah, person. Yeah, absolutely. It knows how to help. Right, them. exactly. Like you are <laughs> yeah. long overdue for these antidepressants. Yeah, yeah. it's it's fucking it's wild to think about who we all were like. Before we knew that this could happen. Right. 
And then now having this fucking think about death mm-hmm. in a real way. Yeah, absolutely. Like in, in an actual real way. Like, like yeah, this ends. Mm-hmm. And we don't know when. Right. Could be sooner than not. Like, you know, I remember like, you know, like comorbidities when that start. you know, which is, you know, f- you know, fat. You know, I just remember like <laughs> when they started talking about comorbidities, right. comorbidities, I was like, you know, I was getting nervous. I'm like, what is, what are these comorbidities? Mm. And, 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 and I don't have diabetes or anything like that, but they're like, fat's a big one. I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, there was a big, there was a, a comic on the bigger side who was, he, he died. Died. Yeah. From yeah. COVID. This guy, Kenny Ortega. Big guy. Funny dude. Funny, Funny guy. Dude. Could kill in pretty much any room. And unfortunately passed away. Got COVID, passed away. And that's the thing. Like, you start thinking about it. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, all right, I don't have diabetes. Right. I'm like, but I fucking smoke. I don't, I'm not smoking now. But I'm yeah. like, and then you have the weight. Right. And then I'm 36. Right. I'm like, I'm not. And they're like, you know, I'd always look at that chart. Mm. with like, well. When the pe- brackets of your yeah, age. Yeah, the brackets. I'm yeah. like, well, people in their 30s. But I'm like, but I'm 36. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, and I, and I was an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And a drug addict right. for a decade. Yeah. Over a decade. Well over a decade. Yeah. From 13 to 25, about 12 years. <laughs> and you go, you go, yeah, I don't know that I want to go to the dance no. with this. Stay home. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of bi- uh, people went home. They went back to their family. And I don't judge them for it. Go for right. it. Do that. And also, it's your family. You don't even know if they're going to live. Right. You don't know if your parents are going to live. Yeah. So you're going to sit there and s- what? Tough it out in New York City? Right. That's insane behavior. I know a lot of people that went back home. To yeah. me, for me, there's no home to go. Th- that's for- and there hasn't been a home to go forever. Right. There, right. Yeah. And um, I guess I could have went home. Right. But I mean, I live with my girlfriend. Right. No, yeah, you, you have a life. Yeah, there's I have a, a certain home. age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's harder to do that. Right. I, right. It's harder to do that. My father and his wife would have been like, please die alone <laughs> like they would have been like please like die like have yeah. the decency right after right. all the shit you've talked about us after all the the, the money you've made like right. dragging our names through the mud please do not come back here to die yeah. like i mean and, and do, do i want to d- die there like do i want to die there with my stepmother rolling her eyes no. like rolling her no. eyes at nobody me? wants to be dying and having somebody give you a, a shady look yeah, yeah nobody wants like a dirty Dirty look, like right. like not so funny now, are yeah. you, fat ass? And I'm just like, <laughs> my, <laughs> my last few actions would be to cough on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so there was nowhere. Else. But then you start thinking about like, I'm like, if I die, these mm. were dark thoughts. Like, you have a girlfriend. Yeah, I'm single. I mean, I guess I could call one of these guys in their early twenties that I've, you know, <laughs> fucked because they like hotel rooms and sneakers and go. Right. Hey, would you want to sit by my bedside while I die? It's such a weird and, fucking and like, ah, request. I don't know. I'm like, hey. No, they'll straight up be like, am I in a will or something? I'll have to like, neg- I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's fucked, right? Because I've been, I, I, you don't have much. I have this career. Right. I have the career. Yes. That's what I have. And right. the career is good. But the career is the least, the last thing you want. Yes. If you're dying. Right. Right? Right. But if when there's no opportunities, it's the career is the first thing you want. So The career is yeah. what you want. It's either first or last in a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird to think about because I had those thoughts. You know, mm-hmm. I had those thoughts. Like I was on the road. I was on the road during the pandemic when cases would drop. Mm-hmm. When they would drop like last summer, people were like, it's over. And I'm like, right. all right. You get a few shows in and then we're like, it ain't over. And you know, yeah. cases went up and then we back off the road. But like I was out on the road, I got my opener was like 24, 25, and he's fine. He was young, yeah. He's and he's like, his whole thing was he's like, no one, no one's fucking anymore, and mm-hmm. I can't go out to bars. And my whole thing in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna die alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm like, well, I understand that. He's like, yeah, the fucking bars, mm. these chicks on Tinder, they're weird because the pandemic. I'm like. <laughs> Understood. Right. But right. also, <laughs> yeah. I will gonna die here <laughs> alone. But but in his to his uh to what he's saying, uh, yes. you know, not being able to go out to the bars and these restaurants closing. Yeah. Some of them had to go. 
Yes, yes. Some of these restaurants had to. Yeah. Be. Yeah. It was, yeah. I and it's just like a friend said that like, oh, they can use COVID as an excuse, right, to close up. Yes, but some of them, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy your dream was crushed. Some of them need to go. I, I didn't need to eat at your shitty burger restaurant. Yeah. that people showed up to. It had horrible brunch. Yes, and it's like people were like, oh, this is no good. Right. Board up the walls. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy. Good. Yeah. And you know what? I I hope somebody. I don't want to say death, but I just hope someone was affected because I don't want it coming back. <laughs> yeah, no, I want I a don't, little lung scar. I don't want someone yeah. sponsoring this place. Yeah. I don't want a GoFundMe yeah. appearing. No, I don't want none hear of it. this. I don't. Yeah. Want, I hope you realize your life shouldn't be dedicated to sriracha aioli. <laughs> no, get out of my life. <laughs> yeah, no. Some, there are necessary changes. Yeah, you're jarring will. things. Yeah, no, you're jarring. You, you annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think differently now about anything? Uh, I mean, right now, this is the thing. You said something. I heard you on uh, on some on. Uh, you were saying that New York City is is frightening to some uh, capacity. Um, when you were here probably, briefly, probably it and was. You, there was. I it was. It, it was. It was. We were in. Times Square late at night. That's that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to weird. bring that up. Yes. Because a lot of, you know, you said that a lot about, and, you know, people think Times Square is just all of New York City. Right. But you're right. Times Square. At first, when I heard you say that, I was yeah. like, man, Tim, he's going a little too much. And then I know. I, and then I went to Times Square. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this place is haunting. Yeah. No, it, there's, haunting. it was a little weird. Yeah. I mean, it is. You Listen, could, still the greatest city in the world. Sure, but I, I always got to be honest. I mean, I've never been to Tokyo. So it who was. Knows? Who knows? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, it 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 threw me a little bit. Yes, because I said this is you know, it, it's odd. scary. Yeah, it was scary. You could hear. Here's the thing. You when could hear. I us, think I'm gonna get raped. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When someone may rape me as a goof, <laughs> not even it's not even sexual at that point. It's just something to do. <laughs> you could hear a syringe fall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and that's when it's terrifying. That's yes. when it's terrifying. So it was certain parts of New York City were scary. Yes. Were very scary. Yes. Uh, where I live was fine. It was not a big deal. Uh, I would say that living through the pandemic, what did it teach me? What did I walk away with? Um, go hard. Yeah. Come if you're coming back. Yeah. Bring all, gather all the self esteem. Leave your stupid clothes at home, and right. just bring all that in and go as hard as possible. Yeah. I lived through it here. I'm fine. Right. And I was cautious. Right. And the subways are not so bad now. Yeah. And I think because people are, uh, I think because there's more people out. Which means that more money is trickling down to the homeless. Yes. And the crazies. And that is better for the city. Yes. Because the thing is, before, there weren't enough people on the subway. These homeless people are now starving. Right. And nobody's looking at And the few, like, it, subway cars, if you had, like, one or two people filled in it, right? Right. No one's going to give you money. Right. Percentages drop dramatically. Yeah. But when you got, like, a decently filled subway car, you get a couple dollars. And that's okay. So now that the city's bouncing back, I think homeless people and people that are on the streets are pro are are less aggressive. I I I it's so funny to to say this cuz I I grew up here. Yeah. I grew up on Long Island. I lived here for years. Mm -hmm. And when I come back here, I love it. I love being here. I don't feel like I don't feel like it's home. I've gone I've gone too far off the reservation. Yeah, no, this yeah. isn't a home to you. Yeah, I'm look like, at where we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like gone from here. I'm yeah. softer now. Yeah, like I'm not as hard. Mm -hmm. Like you know, the whole New York hard. Like fuck it. Right. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Somebody's bleeding on the subway. I think that's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool when kids yeah. get shot. Right. It's gritty. <laughs> fuck yeah. Yeah. New York do a die. I'm just not like. None of that mm. makes any sense to me anymore. You know, as I get older, I start going. It's nonsensical. You know what? I, I realized my thing is I don't want to be New York tough. Yeah. I want to be right. I want to be Midwest considerate. <laughs> <laughs> Those people treat yeah. each other relatively well. Yeah. I remember being in Chicago the first time, and that's not even Chicago. They don't right. people from the Midwest don't even consider that right. a real taste of the Midwest. Right. Some woman, I was talking to uh, a buddy, and I was like, I gotta find a chase. 
ATM and some woman pops up out of nowhere. Well, if you go and I go, who are you? Yeah. I almost flipped out on yeah. her. Yeah. And I go, this is not a right way to act. To yeah. People. You know what it, I mean? The city does something to you. Yeah. And it, I, and I think that's good. Yes. And I think the great innovations and the great, you know, things that we've learned to appreciate, whether right. it's in the realm of art or wherever. Right. Uh, come from being shaken out of your comfort zone. Yes. And being willing to shake yourself out of your comfort zone. Right. But I do think there is also some value to not losing yourself in this city. No, no. And, and, and I know a lot of people who I love and whom, whom I have great respect for who I feel like, you know, when, when New Yorkers, I used to think New Yorkers were the worldliest people in the world. No. And now like <laughs> when like New Yorkers leave New York and they're like, I remember going to New Orleans with, with Giannis and yeah. Sam Morrill, and they were like, why can't you get a slice? Why can't you get a turkey Jesus. sandwich? And I'm going, guys, there's a food here right. that doesn't exist anywhere else. Yes. Creole food doesn't really exist anywhere else in America. Right. It's this amazing fusion of like French, Caribbean, Haitian, all this stuff. And it's only here. Why are we talking about turkey sandwiches? <laughs> it's but a, they never stop. It's a common New York thing to walk into a place that's not New York City and then immediately compare it to something that's New York City yes. and then to be a complete piece of shit about it. Yeah. And it's so, like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Creole jo You mean this is like halal guys? Yeah. Right? Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, a, it's like a French halal guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, it's yeah. not. It's it's not, and some, I used to do that all the time. When yeah. Ben met me, yeah. I used to do that all the time. And I still do it. Yes. I no, still do it I a little still bit. find myself doing but it. But I like, catch myself. Yeah, like, or like uh, Cafe Du Monde. Yes. You take yes. New Yorkers there and they'll be like, Zeppelis. Huh? Right. Right? What? No, no, no. This is like bagels thrown in a <laughs> deep fryer. It's, like, yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's not that it's at not all. It's not just appreciate something that's not. Yeah. And I, I've just gotten to the point now where I, I love it. I come back here. I feel like I'm on a vacation. Yes. And I've surrendered to Los Angeles for good or ill. Yeah. I've surrendered. You called me. I surrendered. And uh, first of all, I saw like a 310 number. I don't know if yes. I can give that. It's zip codes. It's fine. Yeah. And They'll I. They'll find it. Yeah. They'll eventually. It. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. And I just, I got two numbers from that. And I was like, some someone really wants to spam me on some bullshit. Yeah. Someone wants to tell me my, my, uh, my yeah. warranty's overdue. <laughs> yeah. And then it was you. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. But I, I do want to also tell you that you have been selected by Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's funny that you mentioned that because you have been selected as well. <laughs> I thought I when you were like, oh, I'm staying here, I sent you the wrong hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you sent me, I was like, I just, um, I don't know. I When I went out there, I was, I think, I didn't know if I was done. You found your place there. Yes. You were doing well here. Yes. You were everything was going, was clicking was in place was for you. The shows were moving. Yes. Uh what's it called? You got uh there was like things that you were getting. Yeah. Montreal, whatever, yeah. the the comics to watch. And uh and it but I still felt like there was something missing. Yeah. And then when you went out there, it's just like it's like you figured that out. Well, I figured it out, I yeah. hope. And I figured it out with this kid's help. Right. And we figured right. it out in a garage. I'm <laughs> Truly. I'm going to have to kidnap him on the you, way out. You should. Yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> yeah. We figured it out in the garage. I hope you're ready to start over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, he always is. Yeah. Okay. There were others before me. Right. They just weren't funny. Yeah. Some of them look like me. Right. <laughs> He's got a little bit of a chubby Irish fetish. Yeah. Anyway, not, not going to name COVID names. took most of them yeah. out. COVID took most of them. Yeah. No, it's shockingly, nobody who deserved to die of COVID right. did. Yeah. Um, but there was so, there's a real... There's real moments of like, fuck, you know. Mm. And as I get older now, I think just more about like, yeah, we all got to plant the flag eventually yeah. and try to find or create some type of home. Yeah. And I think I have to do it in Los Angeles. Right. You know? Right. It's not Austin. It's not Austin, Texas. No. We okay. tried. Mm. Yeah. Four months. Right. Gave it a shot. I knew. I, this yeah. is the thing. I, I was... Uh, after my set, I had to leave. I had to do. Yeah. I had to do a show in, in you know, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a specialty cheese shop and a right. milk bar. Right. So I'm right as I'm walking out. You're talking about uh, 
how Austin's got like things that Austin has that New yeah. York doesn't. Right. And I go, as soon as I heard you phrase it that way, yeah. I go, he's done with Austin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're only throwing it in New Yorkers' faces because yeah. it's enjoyable. Yes, because it's fun. Yeah, it's just fun. And it's fun to tell New York they suck, even yes. though they don't. And all, right. everyone knows I hate Austin. Yeah. And the thing about Austin is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a C-list town and, <laughs> yeah. and that's really what it is right across the board mm -hmm. it's not about anything specifically right. mm -hmm. across the board it is not where the best and the brightest go no it is it is where the dullest yeah. <laughs> go yeah. and as historically has the best been. of the dullest yeah the best of the dullest mm -hmm. and i just gotta go and i love joe and you know i'll work his club but you know when it opens or whatever I, i'm 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 just I, I think it's a horrible place, and I wish nothing but pain for everyone there. I mean, truly, and I've been kind of honest about that. Right. But, you know, but I've realized during this pandemic that, like, life is short. Yes. Life is short. Right. And you, can, and bu you can't, I was, you know, a lot of your life, mm -hmm. you spend bullshitting. Yes. Yourself. Right. And others. Mm -hmm. And you have to. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of your life is like, you know... You're fighting with your own insecurity. Mm -hmm. You're fighting with your own sense of like self worth. Right. And you gotta like you gotta build yourself up. Mm -hmm. And you get then you knock yourself down. Yeah. And, and 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 you try to get to this like stasis where you're just like, okay, I'm great. I'm not a king, and I'm not the worst person that's ever lived. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for comics. Yeah. Because every day we're like, it's tough. We're, every you wake up and it's a different it's a different feeling. Yes. Or you do a set and it's a different totally feeling. Totally different. You you leave and you're like I'm the king of the world. I walked out tonight. Tonight was a fine show. By yeah. all, by all, it, I did great, but mm -hmm. it was not as well as I'd done in the past. And other, so I'm like, you know, I was just unhappy. Right. And I, my my sense of happiness is very tied into how this goes. And th that's not right. But it's not. I'm too old for that. Yeah. You Here's know what I started to realize. Yeah. I'm actually too old yeah. for it. No, as yeah, somebody yeah. older, you are. Right, it's right. Too, it's too much. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter how the sets go, you just walk away and it's just yeah. like, who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah, somebody, I was telling my girlfriend, I'm doing your podcast. She's like, oh, this is a big deal. And I go, yeah, I know, it's, it's good, but, you know. Who gives a shit? Yeah. I agree. Right, like, it's, I'm happy to do it. Ship Station, if you have an online business and you need to right now, the last thing you want to be worrying about is shipping. Okay, the logistics of it. That's why ShipStation manages everything. It provides you an infrastructure to streamline all of your shipping activities. You can import orders from any sales channel, ship with any carrier using ShipStation's deeply discounted rates, and automate just any shipping task. No wonder 100,000 plus online sellers choose ShipStation. We use it and we love it. No matter how you sell, Shopify, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation, funnels all your orders into one simple interface you can manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. You'll even get access to amazing discounts with major carriers, including UPS, FedEx, USPS. Easily compare characters and choose the best solution every time. With ShipStation, small business can now access the same rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies without the contracts or commitments. I say this. Go to ShipStation.com. Use my offer code Tim Dillon. Get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free, no hassle, stress-free shipping. If you are trying to get your company to increase profitability, or if you're starting a new company, wouldn't it be nice to have two months free? ShipStation.com. Enter offer code T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. After spending late summer on the sidelines, we're really ready to get back out there and make this year's lounge season an epic one. So Bespoke Post is here to take your sun sanded surf game to the next level with a lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. I like these things. Because what they are is you get a box and it's full of really cool stuff. It's like $45. It's like a $75, $80 value of the things that you get. There was this really cool box somebody got me and it's grooming. It's got a detox scrub bar. It's got a knife, uh, a, a case for the I knife. Had a little sheath for it too. A little yeah. sheath for the knife. I like knives. Do you like knives? I do actually. I like pocket knives. I have a K bar. I have a, the, it's the one that Marines use. Bespoke Post is great because you can get cool stuff that surprises you in a box every month. Yes? Yes. And what's exciting about that is you can curate the box, but you'll never know exactly what's in it. Right. So you can basically take a quiz. They know your interest. They know what you're about. But they send you stuff that's very fun. Mm-hmm. 
They have some cool breezy summer styles. They have some cool prints on some shirts. What about the knife? Well, if that's your thing, by all means, do that. I don't really want a summer style. I want a knife. <laughs> I want a sharp knife. So you want the outdoor gear. I'm more of like, I think the grooming goods would be cool. <laughs> I don't care about the outdoor gear. I want a knife. <laughs> Every month, I want another knife. <laughs> I even, I'll even tell the spoke post. Don't don't <laughs> waste your time. Don't waste your time giving me a bottle opener or a pair of gloves. I don't need any grooming. I don't need any of that. <laughs> Just <laughs> every month send me a box with a knife in it or more than one knife. <laughs> <laughs> Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code Tim Dillon at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code Tim Dillon for 20% off your first box. I love it. You love it. We all love it. Boxofawesome.com, code Tim Dillon for 20% off your first box. Well, you I'm know? happy to talk to you. We yeah. haven't spoken in a long time. I think what makes podcasts good mm -hmm. is that. You, I have genuine interest in what you have to say. Right. And there's, I don't have a lot of guests on the show because I don't have genuine interest in what a lot of people have to say. Right. Um, but, you know, you were the first friend I had in comedy. Yes. Truly. Yeah. And and you're not white. I want to say that because right. I always get accused <laughs> of, like, racism. I'm like, everybody's, you know. Am I, am, I, am I like Tony Woods to your Dave Chappelle? You are, you are here <laughs> to... I'm going to be on They Ready this next season. You are here to counter season. a narrative. <laughs> um, you're countering a narrative. No, but... And, and you were the first dude who loved comedy. Yeah. That I really became friends with mm -hmm. who loved comedy. And we, we had a lot of other friends. We had, knew a lot of other people. Right. And their relationship is comedy is what it is. But the, the you know, but you were the first person where I was like, this guy loves comedy. He cares about it. Yes. You cared so much about it. Right. And you wanted it to be you you I remember we would be at your house and your mom would make us dinner. Yeah. And really good dinner. Oh right? my like god. Butter chicken, these really good Indian dishes. She's re she's retired, but I wanna I wanna like chain her to a kitchen. I know. Yeah. You gotta get her back. I wanna open a restaurant and then open up those closed burger shacks and yeah. have her do do her own thing. It was so good. Yeah. And I remember we would talk, and that's back in the era when like we were just coming into the city mm -hmm. as like these Long Island guys. Yeah, they would always be. Yeah, they'd always like look down on you. Of course. Yeah, for good reason. Of course. Yeah, it's <laughs> fair. It's fair. <laughs> yeah, and we, it didn't help that we ran in and be like, you know, uh, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't help that we're like we're basically like Eddie Murphy. Right, right, right. right. Eddie Murphy, right. I, I mean, I'd call myself Eddie Murphy. You call yourself Kevin James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just. It didn't work, but no, it, that was the era when we were starting shows. Yes. We wanted to be taken seriously. Right. And this was the era we were in our mid 20s. Mm -hmm. And we were like, we are choosing, this is our life now. Yes. And that was, uh, and, and I'm so far away from that now. R like, it's yeah. so weird. Yes. To be, to and I've moved three steps from that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you as well, like, you're. You're older, you have a girlfriend, you're mature, you, you've lived this life. I mean, how awful would it be yeah. if you come back here and yes. I'm still like, got to get a 12 o'clock midnight mic in? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be crazy. I would hope you'd come here to kill me. That would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, it'd strangle me with this mic cord if I didn't find some semblance. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, you, you, you love... This is what you love. Like, comedy is something. I've never loved anything else. I know. Uh, that wasn't like Other a person. Other than the girlfriend. Other than, yeah, 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 yeah. And the yeah. dog, yeah, sure. Right. But I mean, as a as like a thing. <laughs> right. I never loved a thing. I didn't know you could do this as a thing. Right. I would, I, you know, I, the first time I watched, uh, I remember watching SNL. Yes. And it was. Uh, Recently? I'm yeah. going to keep going. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, I'll, this was, and who was on, uh, Kevin Nealon was yeah. doing the weekend update. But I comedy to me, like being Indian and like me, we didn't see any of this shit. Right. I thought Kevin Nealon was legitimately trying to get fired from his news job. Yeah. I'm like, this guy is gonna get fired. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's making fun of the news. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, this is a comedy show? Oh, yeah. You can do this? Yeah. And then I'd see people on TV telling jokes. Going, you can actually do this? And watching that and still being, no, this is not even possible. Yeah. And then, then getting able to do it. Right. And then for me, that goes, I would never want to stop this. Right. Any which way. Now, what? why do you think there are less immigrant, uh, you know, like the immigrant story doesn't usually involve comedy? Yeah, because uh, I... And of course not, because... I mean, imagine right if everyone's parents and grandparents got here and said, "I want to be a clown." If <laughs> I mean, it would be crazy. they would turn the ships back. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> they but would drive the ship into the Statue of Liberty. I remember, like, white people are so kind of out of it and this, don't really care about their children. Right. That when we all said we're going to be comedians, our parents were like, "Hey, great, as long as it doesn't involve us." Yeah. Like my dad's like, "As long as you're old enough now, I don't have to drive you to the comedy." Right. The reason Good. why uh, immigrants uh, they're, they're are worried when their kids do. This. Yeah, it's because the, either. The reason why it happens or doesn't happen is because your parents either beat you hard enough right. to talk you out of it. Yeah. Or didn't beat you enough. Right. And then you end up doing it. Right. And then quitting and then going, I'm going to do a real thing. Right. And I think I I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I get it. My brother's yeah. a doctor. Right. First one in my family. Yeah. Is so. it harder? Because to me, I think it's is it is it at a certain point you stop explaining. Right. And you can just, you go, people don't have to understand your life decisions. Yeah. That, to me, is the big thing. Right. That if there's one thing that I think the generation under us, it's it's not the PC or the whatever and all the fighting and the, I, I don't even get on them, but yes, they're a little ridiculous about that. But the main thing, and maybe this ties into that or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would say you don't have to win everyone no that's no i see people out there right whether it's their family their friends their community yes they need everyone that they've ever met right to agree with them or to love them as, that is a real recipe for as health. a non-binary bipoc cisgender i don't yeah. even throw all the adjectives yeah. in front of my right. you don't need to win any you don't just need to win enough people yes just not you don't need to win everybody right and it's great that way yes and it's okay. There's always people on my show that shouldn't be. Absolutely. There's always people in the audience, some of them women, who don't, <laughs> who aren't, it's not for them. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. Go watch a Bachelor recap. I, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It, it's like, I just, there's, it's, we are, I think, I think that's the one thing I've learned as I get older, mm -hmm. is that I don't care who likes gay people. Right. I don't care who likes me. Yeah. I don't care who thinks I'm funny. Mm -hmm. Outside of the people who already think I'm fun. Like, I want you to think I'm funny. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work my ass off to hopefully have you think that. I want you to think I'm a decent person. Right. I don't need you to think I'm a great person. <laughs> I'd like you to think I'm smart. I don't need you to think I'm... I'm I don't want you to think I'm a genius. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm a genius. Mm -hmm. But I've also learned to take the foot off the gas with that stuff. Because I think that's the stuff. When you first started, that was a big deal to you. Huge. It was a big deal. Huge. Yeah, you wanted people to know yes. everything. And yes. like, you, this is my journey, this yes. is my ride. And this is the thing. Some people, that's not their bus. Right. Yeah, they're Absolutely. not. they don't give a shit. Absolutely. They just want, yeah. they want the yucks. Yes. Give them yes. the yucks. Yes. That's it. Yeah, now when I first started, I, I thought um, that we all... Our job mm -hmm. was to inflict ourselves right. on people to a point where they just said, okay. Yeah. All right. Right. And 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 part of that, I I've now learned that that is a colossal waste of time. Yeah. You know what personally made, and professionally. Yeah. <laughs> you know what made you me know? realize that was when I uh I was on the subway yeah. and I saw some guy like singing, but yeah. it was awful. Yeah. Off key, terrible. Some people enjoyed it. Right. And I'm right. Like, and I'm like, I guess that's for you. Yes. And there were a bunch of other people who were like, get this guy off the fucking train. <laughs> Yeah. Throw him under the train. Right. That's how some some guy felt like he put on his headphones. He's like, and he was ready to fight the guy. Right. Was, and I was just like, so that's what it is. Yeah. 
and that's okay. Yeah. Who you get, you get, and then you move on. I think that's the way, the way that, one thing that I think younger people don't seem to have a grasp of yet yeah. is that you can waste a lot of time trying to win. Yeah, I can't find, uh, like, my audience is not going to be Indian people. Right. I mean, you know this. Right. I can't do... My audience is not gay people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, I've done, I'll get hired for Indian gigs. Right. I talk them out of it. Right. I'm like, you know what's a great idea? <laughs> Talking to each other. Yeah. How about that? Huh? Right. How about saving money? Why do you think it is that you have a similar relationship with Indians that I have with gays? Uh, In terms of our comedy, we're like, we're not the star of our community. No. Not, not that that's a good or bad thing. Right. Why are we not the stars of our community? Why uh, are we don't? Why are we not drenched in our community? <sighs> I think because we were meant to look at it differently. Right. And that's the only thing I can come up with. Yeah. You just got to, it's, you were meant to see it from a different perspective. Right. To give you an angle that, hey, guess what? Not all Indians are uh, doctors, lawyers. Right. They're guys who sound like mechanics. Yeah. You know? Right. So it's like, you got to deal with this. Yeah. Or like, if you're, if you're gay, it's like, this right. is not what, you know? Yeah. It comes in so many other different ways. Packages. Right. It's, it's strange. And you'd think that, the the people whose job it is to make sure that things are interesting out there mm -hmm. in entertainment would value that. Yeah, they don't. They want to fill the protocol. Yeah. They want to... It's like, okay, cool. Like, we'll have... We'll hire the Indian guy because it looks good. Right. But to me, the bigger deal is when you have the Indian guy in central... Pennsylvania. Yeah. That's a bigger deal to me. Yes. You put uh, the gay guy in Long Island to headline the clubs. Right. Because he, guess what? Yeah. He gets the work done. Right. That to me is a major, that's important. That's a That shifts deal. the needle. Right. Not the place, not the channel that goes, we have an obligation to hire yeah. somebody who is, who's Indian, who gay, whatever. Right. It's to me, it's the place that's deep seated than Elks Lodge. Yeah. Who goes, you know what? Let's get this Indian guy in here. Yeah. And he, not because it's the good thing to do. Because we love this guy. Because he's funny. He's funny. Because he's he going to entertain laugh. the shit out of us. That's right. Yeah, that's that's what I think was more important. Because that's what, that's at the bottom, at the bottom line, at the end of the day, that's our entire life. And that's what shifts yeah. everything. Right. To be yes, honest, that's does. what changes people's perspective. Yes. You know how many times there's people, they'll come up to me like, you know, I didn't I didn't think a, a Hindi comic could be this funny. Right. And I go, I love that they use Hindi comic. Yeah. And Hindi. I'm I'm yeah. like, I don't know even know how to respond to that. Right. right Buy right. the album though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I take I take Venmo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Venmo me. Yeah. So what do you think is the uh do you ever see yourself outside of the city? That's that's another thing that I've been wrestling with. Is like, can I live elsewhere? I yeah. see somebody like, you know, you go to like Los Angeles. I've seen yeah. another, a bunch of other New York comics go to LA. Yeah. And some, uh, you know, you had heat going out. Yeah. And a lot of them didn't. Yeah. But they still seem pretty happy out there. It's an adjustment. Yeah. They I seem, and I didn't think it's possible. Right. Because I had that same mentality where I go, well, what if I need to get... Right. What if I what if I need yeah. uh, a slim gym at yeah. two thirty in the morning? Yeah, where will I find it? Yeah, how about how about not have one? Yeah. How about it's okay? It's weird because so much of our lives are this shitty career. And yeah. even though it's a good career and I've done, you know, great things in it and you haven't, we've all enjoyed it and this is why we exist. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, it's still shitty. Yeah, CBS bull. Yeah, it's, I've done good things. <laughs> <laughs> you have. You have yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, have you seen me on uh, Little Voices on Apple Plus? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 well, I don't have Apple Plus, no, but I will watch it's, that. It's, listen, if you just use the free trial membership, well, it's I think, a good time I think to do Kathy it. Kathy Griffin, who I'm sure doesn't love me if she knows who I am, but I will yeah. quote her and say, the only award in comedy is to say you're still doing it. Yes. That's it. Right. The only award that a comedian will ever get 
is to say they're still doing it. Right. You, I remember you used to quote Joan Rivers. It's about yes. who can stand in the rain the longest. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that, then that's probably tr true. Yes. Um, and the, the problem is I think a lot of people that aren't, they're standing, but it's not in the rain. <laughs> 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 they think they're in the rain. No. Yeah. They're like looking. It's like a gray day and they're like, this seems like rain. I'm right. like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I got a, I remember a Facebook memory popped up and I saw an old show flyer. Wow. From seven years ago. Yeah. And I just go, and I'm looking at some of these people. A lot of them quit. They all quit. Yeah. A lot of Everyone them quits. Writers. Now, some of them are writers. Some of them are writers. So they're not going to do this. Yeah. They're not going to get on right. stage. They're like, no. why would I? Right. I collect $1,500 a week. Yeah. Right. They're not going to show up. Right. And, and, and you know. And that was never the life for you or me. No. It was no. too too much too much felt like a day job. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, I once I had a gig where I had to sh go there once a month to help write bits. Really for the radio. And and what happened? And every t and it'd be like, okay, cool, it's hundred fifty bucks. Right. And but I would dread the entire time. Horrible. The day before, I go, I gotta get up. Yeah. I gotta go in there. I gotta talk to people. Yeah. I gotta sit here and be like, this is a good jingle. Right. No, no. Yeah. Throw me off the building. Yeah. I can't do this nonsense. We got to do it the way, like, on our own terms. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's the thing that, that I figured out how to do. I think that's the, the biggest thing that I figured out how to do mm -hmm. was that I didn't need the people that I thought I needed. No. That's the real shit. Yeah, man, you figured that shit out. Yeah. Real well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's part of it is, like, you... Depending on the type of person you are, right? Like, like coming out of the closet, I think is part of it. Because years and years ago, when I came out of the closet, I'm like, well, maybe my friends won't like me anymore. But mm -hmm. who cares? No, doesn't you matter. You know what I mean? Right. And I think every decision I've made in my life has kind of been a little similar. Where I go, yeah, I might lose people mm -hmm. by moving to LA. People might not think I'm a serious comic, or they might not like. Or maybe if I do this video and I put a wig on, mm -hmm. people are gonna think I'm an idiot, right? And they're gonna be like, "That's not the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. You should be the comedy seller. You should be here. You should be there." And maybe if I do Logan Paul's podcast, people right. are gonna think I'm a sellout or a, a piece of shit or whatever. Um, and every time I have one of those decisions, I go, "Yeah, but fuck them." Right. That's really the reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but fuck them. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the thing that I would probably say has been the, the best guiding thing. I'm going to leave here and steal a car. I mean, <laughs> there's plenty of stuff in the hotel to steal. <laughs> I mean, I've taken, a, you don't have I've, to leave. I've taken a few things already. You, I'm don't, not you, don't have to, you don't have to steal anything from outside. You can steal stuff from inside. I, I'm stealing your producer. That's the first thing that's he's going. Good. Yeah, he's great. He is good. Mm. He's a little bit entitled. Yeah, I can tell. He's, but I've made him a monster. <laughs> right. No. I've made him a monster. Yeah. I mean, like, I forget what he did the other day, but he goes, like, he'll be eating a restaurant, he'll be eating lobster biscuit. I'll go, mm. eh. <laughs> kind of put a spoon. He down. walked up to me expecting me yeah. to with wet hands, expecting me to dry them. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the real type of real piece of shit. That's the type of behavior. Yeah, you've really created something. Yeah, I've created a monster. It's disgusting. Yeah, he shook wet hands at me. Yeah, he really <laughs> yeah. just is. He's really leaning in mm -hmm. to that part of his personality. Mm -hmm. uh, when I met the guy. He was working at a pet store. Okay? <laughs> right. Urban Pet. Urban Pet. Urban Pet. Not even is, a chain? Is it a chain? It's a chain, but in L.A. Oh, yeah. even pet. worse. It's your, your pet's an urban pet. Why? What, it's, not a, it's not a country pet. It's, it's an urban pet. It's just a collect of those hairless cats? Yeah. It's That's just, all they sell? Yeah. It's just Mexican hairless cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like a, it's, 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 for like, it's for like, we want your dog to feel like he's on a farm. Right. So it's all that type of horse shit. Mm. And I met him there, and um, he was brushing I, a dog's teeth. Yeah, I still think it would be a good idea for him to like work there for two weeks a year. <laughs> Just That's to, his vacation to kind of get it back. You should make his vacation where he gets a regular job. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> I think that that's fair. Like, I think it's not the worst idea. Yeah, for because him. his day to day life is a vacation. Yes, and then you know how like well most he doesn't see it that way. He thinks no. it's hell, hellish. I, Right he, to his wife all the time. He's on the phone with the wife. Oh, we, you know, we were at the Hamptons. I had to eat the lobster again. Yeah, it's a horror to him. Right, that I sounds... had to sit there while he talked to someone, and 
Yeah. He's a demon. <laughs> right. This guy's talking to one of the biggest investment bankers of the world, and I had to sit here and listen to this. Yeah, he's got yeah. some other journalist on, and yeah. they're talking about whatever. Sure, I'm going to use it for insider trading, but how <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how exhausting. <laughs> you know, I've taken this kid all over the world at the Bitcoin conference. Right. And he's <laughs> got the... Yeah, so his vacation, quote unquote, yeah. should be send him to a Petco. This is the thing that New York doesn't have. You don't have producers. No. Everybody wants to be the guy. Right. Everybody wants to be the guy. I still look at podcasting like it's yeah. uh, collecting uh, action figures. Right. I'm like, I'm leaving here going, so podcasting might work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in a goddamn mass yeah. a hotel with a living room. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. And I'm going, podcasting might be the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. It's good. When Do you I get a Hyundai Elantra for doing this? We actually, we actually charge you to do this. <laughs> That's how people with money uh, keep money. Damn we're, it! <laughs> we're actually gonna Venmo request you, Jesus, if you Christ. don't mind. <laughs> and we're gonna, but the money doesn't go to us; it goes to Dax Shepard. <laughs> we, <laughs> because Spotify, chair. Spotify doesn't have the money, so we gotta kick up right to Spotify so they can pay Dax Shepard, <laughs> the armchair chef, more What's money to tell <laughs> Seth Rogen to get high again. Armchair, expert. armchair. Hey, yeah. Seth Rogen, why don't you get high? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're upset? Get high and lay in a pool of money. I don't know. Call a hooker. There's not that many things in life that make you happy. No. Coming, eating, a hug. Right. I don't know how many of those you can buy, but I two mean, out of the three. Yeah, it's not. This is going to be an interesting podcast to listen to of his. Do you yeah. talk to anybody? Who was your boy? You had like a best friend. Uh, I, like... In real life? Was his name Trevor? No. Yes. Yes. Well, Trevor wasn't my best friend. He was a good friend. He was a good friend. Yeah. But there was another kid. There was, well, like, from, from like, home? Yeah. This guy, Chris. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What happened to him? He, man, he lives in Italy. No. Yeah. He's got a baby, got a wife. How did that happen? He was backpacking through Italy. Lost uh. his job. Backpacking through Italy. And he met, uh, he was on the train and he met this girl and he just started talking to her, started seeing her and then went to school in, in Milan. Yeah. And now he lives there and he's got a baby, lovely kid, kids growing up. And it's just so crazy because like you look at a life like that. Yeah. And you go, oh my God, it's out there. People do it. That's you know? fucking mind blowing. Yeah. And, uh, you know. That's well. The guy Trevor, he's dead. But that's not. That's not. Important. What happened to him? Uh, I think he overdosed on pills. But that's not the point. You know? it, let's go to Italy again. Yeah, let's go to <laughs> <laughs> back to Milan. Back to Italy. Yeah. But that, I mean, like that's a great way. You 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 just said something that's great. Mm -hmm. People do it. Yeah. There's actually people that do it. Yes. Right. That's crazy. They find that happiness. Like I look at his life and I go, that is beautiful. That is really beautiful. Yeah. So. But maybe, mm. maybe he's in Italy <laughs> and he's going, I wish I had a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. maybe. You think he maybe he's thinking, maybe. man, it would be, yeah. it'd be great to drive Canal's mom's HRV. He, yeah. <laughs> think he might go, this woman and this child have kept me yeah. from what I really want to do, <laughs> right. which yeah. is talk to Joe Rogan about Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, That's what I want to do. I mean, if he thinks that, yeah, that's got to be the saddest thing in the world. Well, we all have our disease. <laughs> yeah, that's and it true. Might, I, I guarantee it's not this, but no. there's something that gets it. Every, there's something that gnaws it, ever, all of us. You think so? I think so. You think so? I think in the quiet moments, in mm. the darkness... And I think it gnaws at us because there's there's something crazy about this life. Mm -hmm. We know it ends, yeah, which makes us just different than every like most animals. I'm right. sure elephants, you know, higher conscious, you know, but most animals you see them, they're like going around, going like, yeah, this is, hey man, mm -hmm. this is all good. Right. And then one day it's just it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, we know this ends, and we know that we have to make all of these choices. Mm -hmm. We know it's a game where there are choices. Mm -hmm. And we know that each one of those choices, there's then results in um, a few things that we expected to happen and a few unexpected things. And I think that the more of those you make, there's always a part of you, just by the design of this whole entire thing, 
Mm-hmm. The, whatever this is, a high level video game being played by aliens, who the fuck knows who cares? <laughs> you say to yourself, it's so natural to go, what if I had made a different choice? Even when the choice you made was great, mm-hmm. even when the things that came from the choice are good, mm-hmm. I still think, because it, it's the insanity. Right. It's crazy. Yeah, and that thought pops in your head. You knock it out. Yeah, I think that that to me, uh, when you start to do that, that to me feels like I'm uh, flirting with a bad place. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't do that. That to me feels like I'm flirting with depression. I don't want to. I don't. It's do, a bad place. Yeah, I go past it now. Yeah. There's no more hanging out there anymore. Smart. Yeah, I just go. You know what? It happened. It uh, is was was uh, it is what it is, and then I move forward past that. It's because smart. you could get stuck in that shit. And then you're going, you know, yeah. what, what's you ever have? What's a thought recently that you had with that? Um, you, even like if it I was should a, have devoted more of my life to my uh, mental and physical well being and less to this industry. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's sure. That's part of it. Sure. Only because I've met some of the most successful people in this mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Many of them are criminally insane. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they could fill swimming pools with money and do backstroke in it mm-hmm. but at the end of the day um it's it's your shadow boxing ghosts here mm-hmm. uh you know it, it's not you know it, what is that it's the speech from the wire okay the job won't save you mm-hmm. McNult- it's like so i think to myself sometimes what is what is this at the expense of what is this what is this 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 cool shit that I'm able to do, which mm-hmm. I love doing. Right. What is the cost? That's what I think of. Right. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Because I, there's always a cost. I think if you send, uh, I think you can eliminate that feeling. Yeah. That mental feeling. With heroin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. It just it's just gonna take you just gotta sit back and uh send um Ben to a pet shop. Yes. <laughs> and, I think he and, does. And that'll sort like but I how think, good yeah. would that feel for you to watch him there? Oh and- no, I, I, I'm I'm planning on doing horrible things. <laughs> but I, I think that's by the way, I think anyone that does I think that's a pretty common thought. Right. For yes. people. They go, Hey, what? What else could I be doing? Mm-hmm. But if I wanted to do something else, I would. Yeah, and that's the thing, though, right? Yeah. It's, I've done podcasts. Right. And I've said to myself, okay, let me try this. Right. And someone said to me, he's like, oh, you didn't stick with it. Yeah. And I go, no. Right. I didn't care for it. Right. Let's just right. accept that first. Yeah. I. It's like, you know, people's so questions like, well, why haven't you, why didn't you keep doing that? It's like, well, uh, you know, I, uh, during the pandemic, I created a game show. Right. Okay. And I, I shot a few episodes, yeah. created a whole game show, played it with comics. It was fun. Right. Somebody was like, why? It's a really good idea. You should keep doing it. And I go, I don't want to. Right. You only have a certain amount of time. Right. Do the things you want to do. Do the things you want to do. That's it. Right. And then, and, you know, and then you, everything else will be fine. Because it's absolutely, it's over then. Yeah. Man, it's over that quick. Yeah. And I just want to do more of the things I want to do. And I think that's hopefully what we've all learned. Right. You know, that what we want to do, as long as it's not hurting anyone else. Well, that's debatable. And even if it is. Yeah. Who cares? Right. Life is too short. One of the funniest moments was throwing rocks from a roof. You know what I mean? Yes. I laugh. I never laughed so hard. When was that? I was like a child. I'm not saying I'm going to revisit it. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like, all right, nobody got hurt. But you yeah. know what I mean? Sometimes. Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell. Hey, <laughs> questionable characters, sure. Right. But they lived. Yeah. <laughs> they truly lived. That's they truly lived. Yeah. I don't have an island. No. And I think that's like, that. that's what it comes down to. It's like, what what makes us truly feel alive because right. happiness is a weird goal but mm. if you feel alive you feel like you're living it'd be nice to not do it at someone else's expense but there right. are countless people that do 
There are countless people that do. Yeah, and I get it, and I understand the reasoning for it, but at the same time, it's just like, I think that if you can live a, make yourself as happy as possible without at the expense of somebody else, that would be great. Right. But just do that, man. Right. Do that. Yeah, get fucking happy. Get fucking happy. Tell people again, what is your album out uh, there? Oh. you're a great stand-up. Thank and you. And it's hard to get people to, to, to figure out uh, because... People just don't trust anything anymore, and right. you know that it's hard for people to find stand up. Yeah, it's uh, the album is called Draw Four. Draw Four. Yeah, it's uh, you know based on the Uno card. Yeah, and uh, you know it's my current draw. So it's <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, little Draw Uno. Four. Uh, yeah, you can find that everywhere. Canal Aurora Draw Four mm-hmm. album. Find him on social media. Um, All day kca dot com. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. That's his website. S- check up on him. Send him a nice positive message. Maybe <laughs> a negative one. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. definitely gonna, I'm gonna get a couple negative ones. Oh, I'm, I get a couple negative <laughs> I'm getting negative <laughs> ones sitting here. People right. are yelling at me <laughs> about whatever. I mean, yeah, of people course. People are screaming yeah. at me <laughs> today because I said I, I'm, I'm like, hey, I'm vaccinated, which they know already. Right. And, and I'm like, hey, guys, I don't care what you do. Yeah. My literal stance was, I don't care. Mm. If you want to get it, great. If right. you don't want to get it, fine. I'm 36. I got it. Yeah. Uh, I needed to show my vaccine thing to perform at the comedy store. like, mm. And I imagine it'd be, I, I'll, I'm going to need it to travel. I don't know if I will. Maybe I won't. Right. But I'm like, I don't care what you do. That's not enough for people. No. You can't. It's, by the way, my opinion is a non-opinion. Mm-hmm. It's a non-opinion. That's what sets people off. Because they want to be told what to do mm. or validated because then they're back in this good versus evil thing of winners and losers and right and wrong. And yeah. I'm on this side and they're on that side. And it gives their meaningless lives meaning. Mm-hmm. Meaningless lives. <laughs> meaningless. <laughs> and it's not my fault they're meaningless, but they're meaningless <laughs> because you're mad at me on Twitter for the simple opinion that I don't care what you do. Mm-hmm. I do don't think there's a right answer and a wrong answer in every instance for everything. And people got angry at that. Totally unrelated. This yes. episode is brought to you by Pfizer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Bill and Melinda Gates have been so kind to me <laughs> and this show. Yeah, one guy goes, I'm you're fanning being- myself with the check, by the well, way, yeah. from Pfizer. One guy literally said to me, he goes, you're being paid by Pfizer. I'm mm-hmm. like, uh, Pfizer does not sit around and go, what? guy can we get in here who's questioning 9-11 to also <laughs> pump our vaccine right. and i'm not pumping i'm like it's like hey man if you're fat if you've done bad things to the body yeah. this might you know mm-hmm. if if you're 20 and you don't want to do it and you're like fuck it hey god bless you right I, or if you're older you know like people are not doing it some of them some people are doing it and getting fucked up from it mm-hmm. not good some people are not doing it and dying from COVID. Yeah, I mean, not good. COVID sounds terrible. It sounds not fun. And yeah. the people dying, it's just got to be embarrassing. Right. Mm. And and listen, I get if you, there's a lot of people that like playing the game and mm-hmm. whatever. But but my non-opinion, which it is, it's not mm. an opinion. It's, it's like, I don't care. I truly don't care. Right. Of course. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I, you know, question why you care. On either side, why it's such a big deal for you. Mm. If you get vaccinated, you're vaccinated. If your neighbor doesn't, they're not. Mm -hmm. You can live together. (laughs) You can live in a happy world. Use promo code Tim J. Dillon at Moderna.com. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) By the way, (laughs) Pfizer slash Tim. (laughs) <laughs> promo code T-I-M for the booster yeah. you know you're gonna love that booster you're gonna need it when the Delta <laughs> variant comes yeah. the Delta the Lambda baby you're right. getting it all I'm telling you right now it's every yeah. year it's gonna be a new booster shot oh it'll be a new booster it's gonna, gonna be it's pumpkin spice yeah, it'll be for the fall it's gonna be you got your Hulu your Netflix right your booster shot yeah that's it that's your year monthly expenses subscribe and Pfizer's yeah. gonna stick you and they're gonna go subscribe <laughs> <laughs> and yes, you might have Bell's palsy. And yes, you might die two sure, weeks later. Sure, sure, everything tastes like piss. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All of matter. a sudden, 
you're like, I can't taste anything. <laughs> right. I've lost control of my tongue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, everything feels like the temperature of a wet But market. I'll tell you, whoever the CEO of Pfizer is, he's going to be in a really nice house. Yeah. And someone's got to be. Hear him on Luminary. Yeah, yeah. The CEO of Pfizer has a new podcast <laughs> with Dak Shepard. <laughs> Dak Shepard's going to tell him why it's okay. Right. Even though a few people, uh, you know... <laughs> Can't chew anymore, <laughs> and he's sad about that. Dak Shepard's gonna—he's the armchair expert. Yeah, he's gonna he's, tell you. He's gonna tell the CEO of Pfizer why things are okay. It's fine if you're sneezing teeth. Yeah, Casey Aurora, Canal Aurora, find him, Casey all day. Thank you so much, Jim. Yeah, thank I you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, brother. You. Appreciate it.